All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to TDX, Trailblazer DX. We're very uh, excited to have you here today. Um, I hope you all had a good dose of caffeine before joining, because we have a lot to share with you today on, on automation. Uh, I'm being joined here by an amazing team of product managers, so we'll cover everything automation uh, today. As we start, that's the first time you see this slide in this conference, but that's not the last. Uh, as always, our forward-looking statements, we'll be speaking about the roadmap uh, today, so please make any purchasing decision based on available products. Um, and, you know, as always, you can take pictures of the roadmap slides and everything, but um, as, as always, forward-looking statement. Um, we care about your feedback, so if you don't have enough coffee, we can give you five dollars uh, Starbucks gift card. Uh, so please give us reviews. Um, we try to have this session done at every Salesforce event, and it's very amazing to be able to show the entire roadmap uh, to the big audience, both at Trailblazer DX and Dreamforce. And it's all based on your feedback. Uh, we had, I think, we had the most successful feedback last time, last year at Dreamforce. So please give us feedback, and in return, you get a, a Starbucks gift card. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being amazing customers and partners. Um, as a you know, quick question here, how many of you would consider yourself Fluent Addicts? Please, your hand. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for using our product. Thank you for giving us feedback. Uh, we, we won't be successful as product managers, as individuals, without you using our products. So it's very important that we show you all those, uh, all those new items that are coming, all those new features that are coming, but also give us feedback. Like even if you, there are things that are not on the roadmap that you would like to see, you are desperate about having this feature build in flow, let us know. We are really willing to uh, capture as, ma as much feedback as possible during this, this event. Uh, as I was saying before, I'm, I'm being joined by our amazing team of product managers. Um, so Toolsy here will be speaking about building automation. Uh, so using Flow Builder, all the goodness that we're bringing with AI into Flow Builder. Rubin will be talking about transform and how you grab data from, a from external APIs right into Flow. Uh, Sam, our veteran here, uh, we'll be speaking about reactivity, screen flows, uh, et cetera, all the, the, all the new stuff that you can show to your users. And then I will be covering the reporting uh, section in this presentation. So four chapters, but we want to keep time at the end for questions. Uh, so there is a mic in, in the middle, so if you have questions, feel free to come to the mic at the end of this session. Uh, some uh, people will also watch us online, uh, know that there will be a flow, uh, ask me anything session right after uh, this, uh, this uh, presentation on Salesforce Plus. All right, Tulsi, take it away. Awesome, thank you, Antoine. Hi everyone, my name is Tulsi and I'm really excited to be here to talk to you all about the exciting new enhancements we have coming up in building automation. So let's start at the very beginning of the builder journey when you just have an idea for the kind of flow that you want to build. Well, Einstein for Flow can help you turn that idea into a reality in mere seconds. Einstein for Flow can help you create flows using natural language inputs. Simply describe the flow that you want and watch it come to life effortlessly. Einstein for Flow can make your life easier whether you're a seasoned, experienced admin or a Flow newcomer. So if you're one of our more seasoned users, you can use Einstein for Flow to get a really valuable head start in the flow creation process uh, and without having to start from scratch. And if you're a newcomer to Flow Builder, you can use Einstein for Flow to uh, ramp up really quickly without having to navigate all the intricacies of Flow Builder. So right now, Einstein for Flow is in pilot testing, and we hope to make it generally available in the summer 24 release. Here we're going to have the capability to generate simple flows with three to six elements using both custom and standard uh, objects and fields. Then in the Winter 25 release, we're going to have the ability to edit and modify your Einstein-generated flows using natural language. And then following these releases, we're going to continue to refine our AI model so that you can generate even more complex flows with a greater number of elements. OK, so let's say you use Einstein to create a draft of a flow. Now you want to get more hands-on into building. 
one interaction that you're going to have over and over in Flow Builder is selecting resources like screen components or record variable record variables to use in other elements. You may have already noticed in our Winter 24 release, we've introduced a brand new friendlier resource picker that was designed to help make connecting up your flows easier and quicker than ever before. So some features I want to highlight are smarter resource grouping. Resources are going to be organized under the element that they come from. And they're going to be displayed with the label first, allowing you to click in for more details like the description or the API name. We've also updated the icons to make them a lot more intuitive. And traversal navigation is going to be easier because we've added breadcrumbs. So in the Spring 24 release, we're going to continue to roll out this new resource picker throughout Flow Builder. And eventually, we also hope to make it available in custom property editors for customers and partners, saving you time uh, and effort from having to create your own. All right, so let's say now you have built some awesome flows in the builder. Let's take a look at an all new way that you might want to manage your automations, introducing the automation app in Lightning Experience. The automation app is not going to replace setup. You'll still be able to access all of your flows through setup just like you do today. But it's an additional way for you to manage all your automations seamlessly in one place. And it can be accessed directly through the app launcher. In the summer 24 release, we're going to have a unified list view of flows in the automation app with some really cool new enhancements like the ability to search across all your flows. Then in the winter release, we're going to add a view for your recent errors, flow trigger explorer, and you'll also be able to see new feature highlights directly on the home page. The flow detail view is also going to make over is also going to get a makeover with lists to uh, manage your flow versions and monitor occurrences. But we don't stop there. In Winter 25, the automation app will also become the control center for your orchestrations. Using permissions, Salesforce admins will have the ability to open up the world of automation to business users like process owners. This page will give you the ability to quickly visualize metrics for a given automation process uh, to measure impact on the business. You'll also be able to uh, track your company metrics and trends and see historical data to continue driving improvement. Here's a snapshot of all the really exciting features that are coming your way to help you supercharge the way that you're creating automations. Just to touch on a few that we haven't already talked about in summer 24, you can look forward to easier uh, robotic process automation or RPA scheduling. And even beyond winter 25, get excited for the ability to submit your flows for approval before activation and more granular flow permissions, which is going to allow admins to authorize perms for specific process types and even elements and actions. You can also look forward to the ability um, to use a reimagined and modernized RPA that's natively integrated with the Einstein One platform. And with that, I'll hand it to Ruben to talk about all things data. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tulsi. Let's give Tulsi a huge round of applause. Um, and I am so thankful to be up here and talk with all of y'all a little bit about accessing and using data. We know that the access and use of data is one of the biggest uses of your time as members of the developer community. So we made it one of the biggest focuses of ours here at Salesforce. And I'm really excited to tell you a little bit more about what that looks like. Before, here we go. Before that, though, I wanted to have a little bit of a conversation with you before we talk about using data, about how we access and collect it in the first place. When I first joined Salesforce, I immediately became fully ingrained in like everything this company like product-wise has to offer. So like I deleted all of my group chats, put them all on Slack. I no longer use any type of painting anymore. All of my art is in Tableau, like all that stuff. I drank the Kool-Aid 100%. But some of my friends still wanted to keep like their regular like iMessage or whatever, and we realized that a lot of companies are the same way. A lot of organizations don't exclusively use Salesforce. They're distributed across a series of different enterprise stacks. 
And regardless of what that distribution looks like, we want to make sure that you and your organization are enabled with powerful and customizable automation. And that's what we're providing through this suite of features here. Just to briefly go over what they look like, if you want to get or post data via the REST API, you can use our built-in HTTP callouts element in Flow. And you can use open API endpoints if you want to use, collect data from external services using open API. You're also able to use platform events in order to publish via the publisher subscriber model to share data with both other Salesforce products and external systems. Note that you can also connect with any external service via Apex and use our incredibly powerful MuleSoft APIs and RPA, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a second. When it comes to MuleSoft, though, and its capability to manage APIs, we do realize that there is a little bit of friction because this is what the process looks like to invoke MuleSoft in Flow, which means that if you want to, say, manage an API or invoke like a MuleSoft RPA within Flow, there's a ton of steps that you've got to follow. I've got to read off the slide just to remember them. You've got to log into MuleSoft any point. You've got to create an external credential, and it goes on and on. We actually counted, and that's 66 different clicks, which is like 65 more than anybody should have to do. Right? Like, I'm Gen Z, like, I like Amazon one click checkout, so like, this was mind blowing for me to have to go through. And we wanted to take every step possible to streamline that type of overhead for you. We understood that this was a big point of friction for all y'all, and that was hard for us to hear. So we wanted to make it easier. This is what it looks like now. With one button click on the left hand panel, you are able to assign a permission set. And from there, you can go right into the stuff that you're best at building flows. We're really excited because we truly believe that this will enable you to collect and automate data across different systems using MuleSoft better than ever before. Timeline-wise, as you can see on the slide, we're looking at Composer's capability for doing this being available in beta for Spring 24, so be on the lookout for that, with RPA and IDP, which I'll talk more about in a second, being available in Summer 24. Anypoint APIs are going to be available in winter of 25 release. Now, I want to talk a little bit about RPA. For anybody that's not familiar, that stands for Robotic Process Automation, which is like one of the coolest acronyms that I've seen at Salesforce. Um, and one of the really important things that it allows is for you to set like a series of actions that like a bot, for example, would take off across like a series of business units or, or enterprise software stacks or what have you. So it's a really, really powerful tool for outlining that automation and enabling it, and MuleSoft is a great way of providing it. But there was a little bit of a problem because it was pretty difficult to allow for that type of robotic process automation to occur within Flow. And the reason why is because while RP RPAs are really powerful, they're also inherently asynchronous. The issue with that is that Flow was able to invoke one of those callouts, but it's not able to wait until that, call out, that um, RPA callout is complete or that RPA invocation is complete. And the reason why that's a problem is because then you couldn't restart your flow and complete it. But that's no longer a problem. Now via asynchronous external services, you can invoke and complete these RPA processes and then resume your flow, which we're really excited to announce because now it allows for an even greater level of automation in your flow with clicks, not code. Next, I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about data transformation. We know that the task for developers like you does not end at the collection and aggregation of data. And it's really, really hard to articulate how difficult this is to different types of customers that we might have in our own organizations, especially if they're not familiar with how much overhead it can be to go from this enormous amount of data that we might have as our input into maybe like a smaller subset of that or a altered subset of that that we need to leverage in our output. The reason why I bring that up is because usually for doing this type of task, you're looking at parsing through JSON, which brings back like truly insane memories for me of college coding classes, and I'm sure is more than a little bit difficult for everybody, including the most seasoned developers. We wanted to enable automation for this using clicks, not code, which is why we literally provide a graphical user interface in order to provide a mapping between a set of inputs and a set of outputs. 
it goes beyond that too. You can also aggregate different fields. And in the future, we're going to be looking at adding mathematical formulae between different fields to show a relation. That's something really powerful. We're also looking at doing merge collections. And in future releases, which you're going to see in the roadmap in a second, we're going to also enable you to do joins, which are exactly what they sound like, like SQL joins within data transforms. So this is a broader roadmap of what the path to data transformation via the transform element, that's what it's called, is going to look like. We are looking at a summer of 24 GA for the map and transform that I just showed you. And then merge collections are probably going to be in winter 25. We're also looking at chaining transforms, like having one after, multiple transforms like in the same element. Super excited for that, and that's planned for spring 25. Um, <clears throat> so obviously make your purchasing decisions um, according to current information, but really, really exciting stuff uh, coming ahead in Flow. Um, something else that we've just heard is really, really important to all of you and that we know the frustration behind is having to deal with duplicate elements. Deduping is, I'm sure, a huge part of all of our day to days, and we heard you loud and clear. We wanted to make sure that we provided a better way in order to identify and deal with these types of duplicates. But we also recognize that one of the coolest things about getting to work on Flow is understanding the sheer diversity of use cases that all y'all have. And that's important because one person's or one org's definition of what a duplicate is might not be the same as what another's is. And that's really, really important to us. And we wanted to enable you to both take action based off of duplicates, but also have a lot of autonomy as far as identifying what duplicates are. That's important because now with create record element updates, you can create a matching rule that specifies what you define as a duplicate. Which fields need to be replicated or have some type of similarity in order for a record to be determined as a duplicate? And not only that, you can also identify what type of action you'd like to take once that duplicate is identified. For example, merging based off of merge fields or deletion. This is really, really powerful because we know how important all of you are to your organizations, and removing duplicates is a trivial but super important thing that can take up a lot of time. And hopefully this optimizes your efficiency when dealing with that data even more. Just a, a broader look at where the, the roadmap is going and sort of the trail that we are taking together as, a, as the Flow community. So in the summer of 24, we've got some additional really, really exciting things coming up. We've got IDP, or Intelligent Document Processing. This is a way to deal with semi-structured data in PDFs. So a classic use case for this is like, think of like trying to identify like which PO out of 10,000 do I reject and hopefully it's not like the $500 dinner that I might expense or something like that. Like things like that are areas where you always tend to need a human in the loop and that can become incredibly expensive. This allows you to automate that type of identification and down the line in winter of 25, we're looking at enabling it with even more exotic forms of data within those PDFs, for example, forms um, and spreadsheets. We're also looking at data transformations being GA in summer of 24 and enhancing the performance of global variables, which we've noticed is something really important to the community. Um, and in winter 25, like we talked about, asynchronous action, asynchronous external services and RPA will be GA, and then data transform additional enhancements like merge and join will be available. So we're super excited to talk about like all this data stuff, but now I want to turn it over to the, whoops, to the human side, including the side that makes mistakes sometimes, to Sam Raynard. Keep that, I'll take this one. Thank you. Hi everybody. Super excited to be here to talk to you about my favorite topic, which is screen floats. Um, hopefully everyone here has heard the not so groundbreaking now, but exciting news from last year of we brought reactive screens to GA. Um, we think that this is just gonna completely change the game of how you build experiences for your users to walk them through your business processes. We are committed to continue investing in this space because we think it is so important to make flows really actually able to be sophisticated and modern. Um, so we GA'd last year, and in spring 24, we brought you GA of display text and support for long text, text templates. In summer, um, what we are bringing is collection choice sets, um, which means that the options that you serve up in a pick list, a radio button, a choice lookup, can react to a collection that came from another component on the screen. Um, if you're not familiar or haven't heard the spiel about reactivity yet, I highly recommend you check out this trail mix that's linked on the bottom. 
sorry, um, at sforce.co slash reactive components. Adam White on my team maintains that with the latest and greatest information about what you need to know every release. So it's definitely worth a bookmark. Now, our focus to date on reactivity has been how to take advantage of the existing data on your screen or already in your flow as your user is making changes on the screen. But we find that sometimes you need a little bit more. Um, you need to actually like reach out based on what someone has selected, reach out to uh, the Salesforce database, an external system, maybe do something more. And we're gonna bring that to you this year with action buttons. So action buttons are a way for you to leverage auto launch flows from your screen directly by exposing them as a button your, your user can click. So this GIF is showing I select the Acme and Global Media accounts, I click a button, an auto launch flow runs and says here are the accounts, give me the contacts, and then with the power of reactivity we can display those contacts to be selected directly in context. Um, this has been in pilot uh, the past few months, so thank you so much if you participated in that and gave us feedback on the use cases and various other things going on. We're going to bring that to beta in summer um, and then planning to GA later this year. Uh, this one is a particular shout out to Eric Smith. Thank you for being a squeaky wheel. <laughs> um, we're gonna bring you read only and disabled for all of our inputs. It's something that was inconsistently available for the out of the box components for flow. But we're gonna do you one better and make it also conditional. So this is another thing that is living on top of the new reactivity foundation that is the new reality of screen flows. Um, so in summer we're adding uh, read only and disabled to all of our simple basic inputs. So text, date, currency, those kinds of things, and then in winter we're gonna wrap it up with our choices and some of the additional components like lookup and dependent pick list. Now, my personal favorite, but I'm biased because this is what my Scrum team is working on, is repeaters. This was released in beta um, in spring 24, and it's kind of going back to this idea of you should be able to build your screens however you want. It shouldn't be determined by how the technology works to force you to break your screens up in a certain way. Um, we previously saw customers would build a screen to take in n number of items and they put a checkbox at the bottom that says, do you want to add another and do like a decision loop back? That is no more. We will have a container for you to completely manage that in context and then your user will be able to see all the items that they have added. Um, we're going to GA this in summer 24, which will include support for all components, including custom components. It will not include support for record fields. That is a, another thing we're going to have to take a look at in the future. Um, but it will also support the screen features like conditional visibility and validation and help text. And then we're not finished with repeaters. We're going to continue on past the GA and bring the ability to pre-populate a repeater with existing data. Right, and just one shout out, ID exchange is super important to us and um, we heard you loud and clear through that that the address component really needed some love. Um, so we have overhauled it, this release, and um, so you can now require your address components, which we feel very sad it wasn't there the whole time. Um, you can make them disabled, similar to the work that's being done on the simple inputs, um, and we improved how uh, they integrate with state and country pick lists. All right, so I've talked a bit about all the ways that we're making the screens that you can build um, more dynamic and modern for your users, but there are even more ways to make your screen flow experience dynamic, and I'm talking more about how the user gets to the screen flow. Um, so this is just reiterating, orchestration is a way to do that, to dynamically assign screen flows to your users um, at the right place, in the, at the right time, in the right place, um, and you know, everything we do with screen flows makes orchestrations bigger and better. We're super excited about that. All right, and summary slide for you. Uh, this is a lot of stuff that I've just talked about. And then some things sneak peek for even beyond that in the future. Screen reactions is, I don't know if anybody here has used data fetcher on app exchange. We found like a lot of our uh, customers using reactivity or leveraging that. It, we're gonna bring that to you out of the box. I, we think of it as like action buttons, but you don't have to click a button. Like there's a data source for the screen and it's just reacting to things happening. Um, we're also gonna bring input validation 
So it happens client side and isn't only on Next, so your users will get immediate feedback if they enter something that is invalid. Um, conditional requiredness, we're gonna enable you to customize the headers that you show to your users on a screen by screen basis, have an out of the box progress indicator, and then following on all the importance of the integration work we've been doing lately that Ruben talked about, we're gonna make sure that you can actually expose that external data in a data table. And with that, I'm gonna pass it on to Antoine. Thank you, Sam, how amazing is that? Like all those changes. I, I told you we had a lot of things to cover, so we are, we are still not there, but I wanted to take a minute to, I don't know about you, but I, I joined the team three years ago, and I was actually building my first flow three years ago, and I was like, oh, this is so hard. Like, there are so many things that are not there. Like, reactivity, I can't make my screen flow reactive. And what about getting external data, you know, outside of Salesforce? That was so hard at that time. Uh, many, some of you were already building flows at that time, I'm sure. Um, but I've been, I've been amazed by how much work has been done. I want to keep, give a shout out to our engineering team behind the scene that has been building all those cool features that makes flow so much accessible, so much easy to use for everyone. Thank you for them. Um, our last chapter is about reporting, and you might be asking, huh, why do we want to talk about reporting, right? Uh, just because it sucks, right? Uh, there, that's, that's what flow reporting is, uh, and I'm sure you all are very familiar with this email uh, that says, hey, something goes wrong, uh, and what should I do? I don't know, I'm gonna look at this debug view. Um, so we know that's a problem, um, but something you might not know is that we are running a billion flow every single day on the Salesforce platform. So just giving you a way to get this data on a long-term basis and be able to go back in the past and you know, analyze your errors and things like that will cost a lot of storage. Um, so that's, we haven't found a good solution yet. But we're working on this now. And the good news is that we have some products at Salesforce that are coming. You probably heard about Data Cloud. I'm sure you, all of you have heard about Data Cloud at Dreamforce last year. And Data Cloud actually give us a way to store a large amount of data for uh, kind of a controlled cost, I would say. So we are working with Marketing Cloud right now to make sure that all their flows that are running on in, in the Marketing Cloud space are actually being, uh, all the reporting is being stored in Data Cloud. And we give them access to those uh, flow to analyze the performance, analyze the decisions, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that is already there for Marketing Cloud customers, and the goal for us is to extend that to all flow types potentially un until next year. Uh, so we're gonna give you more uh, reporting uh, and more way to debug your flows at scale. Additionally, uh, if you are using orchestrator, flow orchestration today, you already have logs at the process layer. Um, so you can already create custom reports and dashboards. Uh, that will give you an idea of when flows are executed, when flows are completed, et cetera, et cetera. So at, at the process layer, and you can build those, those dashboards. One feature that is coming in summer on the orchestration side is the ability to pause and resume and recover an orchestration. So now you, if you build a long running process that has a combination of multiple screen flows uh, or other type of flows, then you can potentially pause that process or if there is something wrong happening, you can recover from that error easily and continue the process. So that will help you focus on improving your automation over time, continuous improvement is key here. One quick reminder, and I know Diana speak, spoke about this uh, a month ago, but process builder and workflow rules are finally going away. Um, so if we, you are building new automations, uh, I know we lo you love process builder and workflow rules, but please use Flow. Um, we believe that it's now the, the default tool for automation, and, um, and if you still need to have existing workflow rules and process builder running in your org, then start migrating them over to Flow. Uh, we will um, disable by December 2025 the ability to edit and activate new workflow rules and process builder. And, uh, but don't worry, we will not automatically uh, deactivate your existing automation. We still want your org to run. Uh, it's just that we will be end of support as end of 2025. And if you have any question about this, Diana is right there. <laughs> All right, uh, just a quick uh, plug on ID Exchange. It's very important. I mean, all of this roadmap, um, many, many items are actually coming from ID Exchange. 
So use the process automation tag. That's going to go directly into our uh, inbox. Uh, file you know, one ID per feature request. Make sure that descri you describe this ID as best as you can and give us the use case. Give us why you need this feature, why, why it is, that, is that blocking you, and also spread the world. Make sure that you have more people that have the same problems um, uh, upvoting your ID. We always look at ID exchange with, uh, uh, based on the most upvoted IDs. So make sure that you spread the word. Also, uh, if you are not using ID Exchange, eventually you can always speak with your Salesforce rep. Uh, they will create something called Voice of the Customer that we use internally. That will also go directly to us, and we, we're going to kind of merge all the ID Exchange plus the Voice of the Customers, and uh, that's how we build uh, our roadmap. And we are proud to share those roadmap with you because they reflect what you guys need. Quick reminder that we need your uh, feedback, uh, so please scan this QR code and give us uh, feedback um, as you can. And finally, there is, it's just the beginning of this event. There are a lot of sessions about Flow uh, during these, these two days. Uh, you can find amazing demos in Platinum Park and Microsoft Mountain, God bless you. Uh, and you can also get hands on um, in you know uh, eleven thirty twelve thirty there are many many sessions where you can uh, learn about all the new stuff, uh, especially AI uh, related stuff all right it 's time for our questions so if any of you has questions and uh, maybe a big uh, um, you know thank you for being here and uh, have a great event everyone.